Within the talk I gave yesterday, I was looking at how new technologies can help us bridge the absolutely massive gaps we have in terms of data generation. There are many species we have almost no data on, there are huge parts of the planet that we have no data on. Using AI based on images or using molecular techniques, we could start to fill those gaps. But it would also provide a means of aggregating data that would help us in other forms of monitoring. The use of eDNA and those forms of biotechnology are opening up huge opportunities for monitoring biodiversity. eDNA stands for environmental DNA. Um, and that might come from going and getting a soil sample or a water sample or even collecting the air. By taking that environmental DNA, we can see what there is around us. And given the ever-reducing costs of using those eDNA type technologies, it means that we can start to actually monitor a much larger area than was ever possible before. And any other form of monitoring, like camera traps, is far more sporadic. Something that eDNA does that other technologies don't allow us to do is because of the way you can sample, you can have a lot less randomness in being able to detect things. And that means that for taxa that we don't pick up on camera traps, we can start to get a much more representative selection of what animals are present. Using these new technologies, it means that we can get data from those blank spots on the map where we have almost no data on what species are present. These new technologies are opening new worlds in our understanding of what species there are around the planet, from the micro scale up to the macro scale. I first moved to China in 2013, and China is a country like no other because the scale of work here and the ambition is pretty much unparalleled. And China actually puts a larger percentage of its uh, GDP into research than any other country. So it's a fantastic place to be doing research. And some of the technologies being developed here are evolving at a rate that is almost unparalleled elsewhere. In addition, China has the concept of ecological civilization. And from a biodiversity perspective, this is a really useful framework. There is now a mandate that is in the constitution to have a healthy environment, which is for the good of not just humans, which it very much is, but all other species present. To institute ecological civilization, China has a whole suite of different tools, like ecological conservation red lines. So some of these new tools are also really useful from an um, international standpoint, because it provides a framework for managing the environment in a much more sustainable way. In terms of the global biodiversity crisis, we cannot overcome this by all working independently. We cannot monitor our progress to or away from global biodiversity targets unless we have standards, unless we have genuinely interoperable data. And so we know that it is fully comparable and we know how to develop priorities that work. And that is literally the only way we can monitor our way towards these future targets. And we can only make progress if we work together.